Hey guys, so today what we're going to do is we're going to test some of the new appliances I got. And, uh, you know, I got a new microwave, I got a new refrigerator, uh, got a new coffee maker, and a new grill, griddle, waffle maker thing that I want to try out. You guys already seen the rice maker uh, work, you know. I may or may not test this, but you know, this actually I'm very happy with this little rice maker. It works great. Um, Anyway, so uh, I'm going to test all these appliances in my using my new battery and you know, my new inverter and everything will be powered through the car. It won't be powered through the house or anything like that. So first thing I want to do is I want to change the charge controller. And this charge controller supposedly uh, recognizes lithium ion phosphate batteries, is, which is what I have. Uh, my old one is working fine, but uh, this one... Um, it supposedly recognizes that battery and in addition there's a little battery meter and I want to be able to see what percentage I have left I'm not sure how accurate that is but I'm gonna try that too so I'm gonna hook this up and then we're gonna try the appliances today all right this is my old charge controller it actually has been working out well for me I haven't had any issues with it uh, I had some charge controllers in the past that died but uh, anyways I'm gonna see if this is a uh, upgrade to one that uh, does charge specifically lithium ion phosphates and there will be a battery meter on this thing so we'll, we're going to check that out i'll leave a link in the description for this thing if you're interested we're going to swap that out all right i got my new charge controller in and it's recognizing a lithium battery and uh the nice thing is that it matches color with my alpha my new alpha uh, inverter so that's nice and it actually matches my refrigerator kind of nice too with all the blue but anyways the refrigerator will be the first thing up all right so this refrigerator is an antarctic star refrigerator i got from amazon and just like everything else i'm going to leave a link in the description for it for you um let's take a look at the manual the manual is nothing fancy you know these uh, chinese products don't always have the best manuals but uh, I, I don't imagine it'll require too much reading anyway so the reason why I got this was that it folds like this and I didn't want one that folded like th this way because I wanted to use this as a center armrest in addition to a refrigerator so if it folds this way it you know we could have access from the from either passenger or driver and from the people in the rear so that actually worked out well. It fits in really snug, okay? There's no room for error in between these two. It's not too tall. The plugs are right here. And uh, it comes with a AC adapter. But for us, we're gonna use it in the 12 volt mode. And it does just use a cigarette lighter type thing. And, and I have an adapter for that over here. So it's just gonna, be routed underneath and uh, we'll give it a shot All right it's plugged in it says it's 72 degrees Fahrenheit in there right now which is not cold at all 13.4 um, volts so let's uh, set, turn this down all right so we got to get it out of the, the the lock mode press both these things down for three seconds it says all right and now we can set our temperature. Let's set it to 35 degrees. I don't want anything freezing in there. So let's see how that goes. It's at 72. We'll see how long it takes to get to uh, 35. Right, we're going to leave that running and letting it cool down. And we're going to move over here. And I'm going to start by making myself a cup of coffee. All right. So we're going to try out this coffee maker. And it is an elite gourmet coffee maker uh if you want a full review you could click that link up there i had i did a full review on my other channel um, but for this um this demo i want to demo it using the the power source inside the car and things like that so i want to make sure everything works out well for camper mode not just plugging into you know your house well, there's a strainer which i like So you don't have to use a, a paper strainer if you don't want to, but you can use those single-use pods. That's really handy, too. Um, so I'm just going to make a little bit of coffee. All 
right. Put some water in. Okay, so yeah, you know, when I'm waking up in the morning, I, I don't feel like pulling out the burners and boiling water to make coffee. That's what I've done in the past, but you know, today I'm just gonna plug it in, push a button, and see how that goes. So if you remember, I have that plug installed there. Oops, I gotta plug it in the back. All right, now that I got my inverter actually turned on and, and this plugged in, uh, we're gonna see how this goes. I guess it's already in the on mode and we're gonna time it to see how long this takes. You see the smoke coming out. All right, it's just about to finish up. Um, so it, it took around four minutes for it to fully boil this this full thing uh, you know to start the boiling that happened really fast but to to boil and fill up this full cup it took about four minutes okay uh, it's not too bad uh, you can also use it to boil water for ramen or something like that and maybe we'll test that out later but anyways it's all good light shut off let's see if i put uh, enough coffee grounds It's definitely hot. I mean, if you if you're afraid it's not hot enough, it's hot. It will burn you. All right, uh, I probably need a little bit more coffee grounds the next time. It's a little weaker than I prefer, but uh, I, I think it, it it does make a smooth cup of coffee because the the water does get hot enough. Uh, but while this was boiling, the refrigerator is now down to 28 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is uh odd 26 degrees fahrenheit now anyway so but this is with nothing in it you know this is it's completely empty it does feel cool in there so that's good so uh i'm not really sure what a normal refrigerator setting is but uh, i'm gonna look that up and then set it on to what a refrigerator is normally set on in, inside the house but uh that cooled down pretty fast let's see my my inverter is still 13.3 after I'm running the refrigerator and uh, the coffee maker charge controller uh, the batteries uh, the battery meter on the charge controller is still showing us full all right so I read that uh, typical refrigerator settings is around 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit so let's change that and we'll up the temperature setting to 40 and what I'm gonna do I got two cans of soda that I'm gonna put in here now we know it cools down pretty fast with nothing in it but uh, that's not realistic There's nothing in there it's not gonna be up too often so let's put in two cans of very warm soda this was sitting in my garage it's very warm and we'll see how long it takes for those sodas to become drinkable. While we're waiting for those sodas to cool down, I'm going to put away the coffee maker and uh, try on the next thing. This coffee maker is going to sit in here. Let me show you. It's just good. I should wipe it down first so it doesn't drip. But it's just going to sit in there like that. So what I have next is this sandwich maker and and like like the coffee maker and, uh, and everything else i'll leave a link in the description for it uh this is a sandwich and waffle maker and if you want the full review on that you can click the link up there i did that on my other channel also uh, but what i want to do is i want to see if i could use this kind of like a, a mini grill if i don't want to fire up a burner or anything like that if i just want to cook something small uh maybe a small steak i want to see if it works all right, so there, you know, in the in the full review, you see there's a, a few plate options you could have, a sandwich maker, waffle maker. But, uh, what I want to try today is uh, the grill mode. I want to see if I could just cook off this. And uh, let's get. Let's get a small piece of steak and see if I can cook it on. And just like magic, 
I got a piece of steak. You can see it is pretty thick. It's not a big piece, but it is a thick piece. And uh, that's the way I like to eat my steaks. So let's plug it in. Refrigerator's cooling down. Green light is on, so this is heating up. I'm gonna let it heat up just for a little bit, and then I'll put the steaks on, close it up, and walk away. All right, I feel like it, it's warm. I don't know if it's hot, but it's warm. Let's put on the steak. Looks like it's too thick for me to close it. So let's just hold it like that for a while and uh, see what it does. While I'm waiting for this to cook and heat up, I'm gonna put back on my um, my towel, my paper towel holder that I took off while I was building this. All right, well, I haven't even started putting that up yet. And this thing is sizzling pretty nicely. Let's take a look. I don't know if you can hear it through the camera, but it's definitely sizzling up. So let's let it sit for a while. We'll get that ready. Let's take a look. See, the green light just turned off, which indicates that it got to a certain temperature before it shuts off. Let's take a look at that. Well, it sure smells good. <laughs> that all right good. looks like we're gonna need to turn this oh yeah that looks good gotta turn it to make sure it cooks evenly because you can see by the angle that this back part will cook a little bit more than this front part because there's less a little surface contact on the front. So next time I know, get a thinner slice of steak. It's still cooking, but let's check uh, the battery, see if it went down at all. So looking at the battery meter, it, it's still registering at full bar, so it hasn't even gone down at all with uh, the coffee maker and this grill going. Um, and my temperature is down to 41 now and that's because i have the soda cans in there that were you know garage temperature which is warm and it's having a harder time cooling down now of course with something actually in it this is looking pretty good all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, grill the sides and I'm just going to treat this like it's a grill. Cook it on the sides. Oh man, it's looking good. Okay. Look at that. So now I'm going to char the sides a little bit. You can see the oil collecting. And that's because I'm in my driveway and there's definitely a slope on my driveway. So let's, you know what? Let me try something. All right, so what I'm going to try is just closing it on the two edges like this, holding it up so I can cook the sides of the steak. Oh, yeah. That looks good. That's a good way for me to char the two sides of the steak, too. See the color? It's turning out fantastic. I can't wait to try it. Okay, let me look. All right, that's looking pretty good. Might still a little too soft. I'm going to turn it at a bit of an angle. Have it cook on both sides again like that. 
All right, while this is cooking, you can see it's drawing 5.3 amps uh, from the cooker. The, the refrigerator is, is on right now, the compressor is on, uh, but that's connected straight to uh, the battery. It's not going through um, the inverter. So that, that 5.3 amps is not part of what this is drawing. Let's see what the controller is reading. So the controller is uh, still at full bars. You know, it's running at 12.6, which is which is normal. You would expect it to drop a little bit because there's a load as opposed to, you know, just recharging the battery where it's usually 13 something. So I, th I think everything's holding up great. The inverter is doing great. Refrigerator, charge controller looks good for now. I wonder how my steak is looking. Pretty darn good. Oh man, look at that. Oops, let me change the angle. Look at that, that's looking good. But you see this, it's collecting. So um, what I need to do is to sop up some of that. I'm at a, like I said, I'm at an incline. So all the oil and stuff is going to one end. Let me sop that up so that it doesn't spill out. That's not too hard. All right, I think this steak is almost done. Let it cook a little bit more and then we're gonna give it a shot. All right, man, that, that looks good. Let's take a look at this. Not bad. You know, on my review video, I didn't rate the grill part of this too high because I was trying to cook bacon, but bacon was just too thin. If you have something thick enough to cook on both sides, I think it's actually really good. But let's taste it and see. All right. Oh, wow. Look at that. Cooked through pretty well. Mmm. Pretty darn good. I'm actually very happy with the way this turned out. I didn't have to turn on a burner or anything. I just plugged it in. Worked great. Very happy with this. Steak and coffee for breakfast. I'm gonna need a snack. Now it would have been awkward if I just sat here and eat while you watch that. That'd be rude. But anyways, I'm done eating and I've come back to clean up the mess. So never cleaned one of these before with uh, with steak juice in it, but I'm gonna see how easy it is. It's actually still hot. But I would imagine being just a grill, I could just wipe it down. And I could do a deep clean if I like, or I could do a, a wipe down clean because there's so much oil and stuff right there. It's, uh, you could just pretty much wipe it, but uh, it's still hot, so I'm gonna hold off on doing it completely. But I sopped up, you know, a lot of the oil. And you know, you could just rinse it down, just like a normal grill. But anyways, I'm gonna put this away for now, and we'll go on to my next test. This test is here. In my pantry, I got some top secret popcorn. No microwave is worth its salt if it can't make microwave popcorn. Again, I leave everything unplugged. So I'm going to plug in the microwave. It clicks on. I don't know if it shows up uh, the meter, but uh, let's. Okay, it's open up some popcorn and try the popcorn setting. Let's see, 
I can see the, the popcorn settings probably for a smaller popcorn, so we're gonna have to up the time a little bit. It is sizzling, but it's not popping and it won't be done in six seconds. Let's throw it in for another minute. See the bag getting bigger and you can hear the popcorn popping. All right, with the microwave on, the fan turned on my inverter, so it's, it's drawing a load. But I think I'm gonna stop so I don't burn it. And let's take a look. The, the, the top bar was flashing on and off a second ago. And when I turned off the microwave, maybe it stopped flashing, but it's finally some sort of load and uh, the inverter got hot enough to trigger the fan. Now let's check out the popcorn. All right. Now we can make popcorn, and I have, and I have this recliner here. You know what you could do back here for sure. It's movie night, man. You're out camping. If it's raining or something at night, pop yourself some popcorn. Watch a movie. Ow, ow, hot, hot. As expected, it tastes like popcorn. All right, so the, the fan of the inverter stopped blowing once it cools down enough and we are still at four bars full bars on the battery meter like i said i'm not positive how accurate that is but uh, you know we ran the microwave we cooked a steak uh, we made coffee with the coffee maker running the refrigerator and let's see we're at 39 degrees right now but let's see if the cans are actually that cold yeah it, it's definitely colder it's not drinking temperature yet but it's definitely colder and we'll just let that keep running so I could have myself some refreshment later. But that's going to wrap up our test. We test the refrigerator, the inverter, the new charger, coffee maker, microwave, grill. And I'm going to finish up my coffee. And uh, it's too early for uh, Miller time, but it's finish up by coffee time.